الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله in last episode we covered few things uh, which we need to do or if we can add to our uh, daily routine especially when it comes to Ramadan and if you can do it uh, around the year Alhamdulillah it will be good thing to be added uh, but if you can't do it for whole year but at least in the month of Ramadan we need to try to act on that that was to uh, read about the Hajj Salah, uh, read about the Hajj prayers and another is to make dua at the time of Sahri before the time for Sahri ends ask for do istighfar make or ask dua for forgiveness from sin or if you have got any wish that's the time to make dua so that our wish uh, can be accepted our duas can be answered today inshallah uh, we will go briefly about what are blessings in Sahri itself there are many uh, brothers they tend to miss this uh, sunnah of prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam the reason being maybe they stay awake till late and then they can't really wake up in the morning for sahri but again uh, if you stay asleep during the time of sahri and if you don't wake up for fajr salah you are you are doing something really really wrong and uh, when i'm saying wrong it's you just trying to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with one action but again you are inviting the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing something which is not good that is missing your salah so the best thing will be to wake up for sahari take part in sahari eat something acting on the sunnah of Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam pray your fajr salah and go to sleep so I would request all of, the, uh, all of our brothers avoid staying awake till late night if you do that uh, you will be uh, you know tired for you for a whole day and that is the reason in in the chapter which is for tahajjud uh, there is mention uh, that you know prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam has mentioned at one point that we should try to sleep during the day you know have a little bit uh, nap during the day and that will help you to stay awake at uh, stay awake or wake up early in the morning so it is recommended from the sunnah of prophet sallallahu wasallam not sleeping for hours and hours but at least in the afternoon qaylula or siyasta you can say you can do it maybe for half an hour or something but this will give you strength to wake up early in the morning for sahari and even uh, maybe little bit earlier so that you can pray at the Hajj Salah, you can pray, uh, you can make dua and then partake in Sahari and then pray your Fajr Salah and go to sleep. Now, having Sahari or eating Sahari is the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. And when I say it is Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this should be enough for anyone to wake up and have Sahari in the morning. But again, I will mention uh, few ahadiths of Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam where Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned about the blessings of Sahari blessing of uh, waking up in the morning and having something to eat before we start our fast this hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hazrat Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu he is the narrator of this hadith he said that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said partake in Sahari because there are blessings in Sahari Subhanallah. Huzur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, don't miss your sahari, partake. Wake up, have something to eat for your sahari because there is blessing in it. And there is another hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says the difference between our fast and the fasts of the people of book, that is Ahli Kitab, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says the difference between our fast and their fast is of sahari. So we need to, uh, you know, even when it comes to Ibadat, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't want us to imitate people uh, who are not Muslims 
okay we live in a society i'm not saying that we shouldn't be interacting with them but even when it comes to ibadat prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he doesn't want us to imitate or follow any actions of people who are not following islam and that is the reason you know when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he migrated to madinatul munawwara and he saw jews in madinatul munawwara fasting on the day of ashura prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam inquired them about the reason and when they said this is the day when hazrat musa alaihi salam uh, he was saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from Fir'aun then Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said if I am alive next year we are going to fast on the day of Ashura but we are going to fast for two days we will fast on 9th and 10th just to make sure that we don't follow their way so even when it comes to Sahri Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says the difference between the fast what we keep as a Muslims and fast what Ahli Kitab they keep is of Sahri and there's another hadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says Allah ta'ala and his angels send blessings upon those who eat sahri those who eat sahri so you get blessings you know uh, dua from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well, you get blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angels they make they pray for you if someone who wakes up and eats his Sahri. And as it was mentioned before, uh, Prophet Sallallahu has said, sleep a little in the afternoon to make it easier for you to be able to stand in the worship during the night and eat Sahri so that you can get strength for fasting during the day. So Prophet Sallallahu has shown us the way. Sleep a little while during the day. And what will happen? This will give you strength to stand in worship during the night. Do Qiyam in the night and likewise it will help you to wake up and have your Sahari so that you can gain strength for fasting the, during, during the day. Amir Sunnidat Islami, you know, after mentioning this ahadith, he has uh, put a small paragraph explaining the blessings of Sahari and he says always eat Sahari because there is goodness of both worlds in eating Sahari. So it's not just about Akhirah, it's about this dunya as well. Firstly, he says that Sahari is obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa You're doing itaat. You're doing ittaba of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if you do that, you know, alhamdulillah, uh, you will get the, get the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And another thing what he says, that result, this results, you know, if you wake up for Sahari, if you have something in the morning, this results in increased risk, increased sustenance, increased livelihood. And then he says, someone who claims himself to be a true lover of Prophet ﷺ, he will only look at whether this action, this particular deed was done by Prophet ﷺ or not. And if Prophet ﷺ has done it, then without any questioning, he will act on it. So request to all our brothers, all our sisters, all families who are listening to me, don't miss your sahri. You know, sleep at night. Once you pray your Isha, once you pray your Tarawi, if there is anything what you need to do, and if there is nothing important, go to sleep, but wake up for Sahri in good time so that you can pray your Tahajjus Salah, you can pray, uh, make some dua of forgiveness, and then you have something to eat, something to eat before the time for Sahri ends. Now, once you have your Sahri, then it comes to the time uh, of making intention, Niyya for fasting. Now, what we need to realize, you know, that uh, people, they stop eating and drinking uh, because of many reasons. Sometime because of habit, okay, someone who wants to lose some weight, okay, he might give up eating and uh, uh, drinking. He might say, you know, maybe 12 hours a day, I won't be eating, 14 hours a day, I'm not eating. So that can be one of the things. Or uh, someone might not eat because of lack of hunger. There are people sometimes, they are very low on diet. You see them, they hardly eat anything. Why? Because they don't get their hunger. Sometimes there are people who don't eat because of some illness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. But there are people whom we see, if they are, if they are ill, it is difficult for them to eat. And there can be, uh, you know, many reasons. And one of the reasons why uh, people they will abstain from eating because uh, it is uh, it is to perform ibadah or to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so therefore it is very essential it is very important to make intention of fast so that we know 
that the reason for fasting is to do the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So remember this thing. Whenever you're fasting, have this intention. Okay. Now again, when it comes to intention, our scholars, they say intention means to make uh, that firm determination, intention within your heart. So even if someone has got this thing in that, or for example, even when you wake up for, for your sahri, your intention is because I have uh, I, I've woken up for sahri because I want to fast for that day. So even that is your intention. So this is going to be sufficient, but it is better to repeat that intention. It is better to say the words which are being mentioned are of intention. And what are those words? So it is being mentioned that you can repeat these words. Nawaitu an asuma ghadan lillahi ta'ala min shahri ramadana hadha. That the meaning of this is I make intention to fast tomorrow for the sake of Allah ta'ala in this month of Ramadan. If you know Arabic and I know for sure, uh, especially the Ramadan uh, timetables which are made, they have this niya. Uh, printed on it in Arabic and in other languages, you know, depending upon uh, place you are. So you can read those words and try to confirm your intention with your tongue as well. So these are main two things what we did today. But inshallah, I will start on another uh, thing. You know, you did Sahri before Sahri, you prayed Tahajjud, you did uh, Istighfar, you made Dua, you took Sahri, you made intention. Now it's time to start your fast. Now one thing is, uh, you know, fast has got two things. One are etiquettes which are very visible, very known. And that is to abstain from uh, eating, drinking and staying away from having intimate relationship with your, uh, with your wife. Okay. So, and that is from the time of Sahari until your Iftar. So these are main three things one needs to refrain from when they are fasting. But however, it's been mentioned there are some hidden etiquettes. There are some hidden uh, hidden actions that you need to follow for your fast or if you want to attain or if you want to gain the blessings of fast. So if you truly want to uh, gain the blessings of fasting, so it's not only you need to follow these things, staying away from food and drinking and getting close to your wife, but it also mentions that we need to stay away from many evil actions and that is the reason when Quran mentions about the maqsir or the purpose of fasting Quran says Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum then Quran says la alakum tattakun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says this fasting has been prescribed to you this fasting has been made compulsory for you the way it was made compulsory people before you with that hope لَعَلَّكُمْ that you become pious you become God fearing you are still in yourself the consciousness about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherever you are you have that feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is looking at you and this is the main intention of fasting or this is the main purpose of fasting to gain or to achieve that state of mind where you feel the consciousness, consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Abstaining from food, drink is important, okay? But apart from that, I will request our brothers, to, uh, our brothers to and sisters as well to pay attention to these things as well. Very first thing which Hazrat mentions here is refrain from lying. Jhoot. You know, lying is something which is disliked by any human, irrespective whether they have religion or they don't have religion. Everyone dislikes it. Amongst those uh, habits or qualities which are bad, lying is listed there. So even in the state of fasting, uh, you need to abstain from uh, abstain from lying. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said this hadith: If a person does not refrain from lying, then Allah subhanahu wa taala has no need for him to give up his food and drink. Allahu akbar. So wise fasting, if someone is lying, okay, he doesn't be honest, he doesn't speak truth, he keeps on lying, then this hadith is an eye opener for all those brothers and sisters. Prophet ﷺ, he says that if a person does not refrain, if a person doesn't abstain from lying, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want him, uh, doesn't need for him to give up his food and drink.
So if you're giving up food, you're giving up drink, you're going through so much of hardship, then you need to make sure that you leave lying as well. Again, it brings me, you know, I can remember one hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked, can a moment be, uh, uh, you know, can moment be a coward, Muslim? So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, yes, moment can be Muslim. And then Prophet Sallallahu was asked, can Mu'min be a conjuice, you know, uh, stingy person, a stingy. So Prophet Sallallahu he said, Mu'min can be stingy, can be conjuice. And then Prophet Sallallahu was asked, can Mu'min be a liar? Prophet Sallallahu he said, no, Mu'min can't be a liar. So if you claim yourself to be that you are Mu'min, you are a believer, then you need to make sure that you don't lie and especially when it comes to fasting you need to abstain from it another habit what we need to give up is Hazrat says that even inappropriate words should not be used you know we live in a society uh, sometimes we see uh, there are business owners when it comes to people who work for them or sometimes if it is uh, you know managers or people who have got people working for them sometimes we see them doing or sometimes we see certain teachers speaking like that to their uh, student or parents talking to their children or children talking to their parents or friends within themselves and what is that habit of swearing habit of swearing so ramadan is the month you know where we need to take control of our tongue you know, and it happens, we see there are people who can't, con uh, who can't finish their sentence without swearing. Every sentence, every phrase they say, there is swear word in it. They swear word in it. Some sort of abusive language is there. And some people, they have made their habit, they can't complete their statement until they add some swear word to it. If you are so used to it, then Allah protect you. Try to give up this habit. You can just say, you've heard many cases, you know, where someone who had this habit and when they went in coma, and you all know coma is a state where a person uh, is brain dead. It's only heart which is pumping blood in his body. And we don't know exactly we can hear whether he can come out of that state or not. But there's been cases in that state. If someone was used to some bad habit when he was alive, that person, even in that state where he's completely unconscious, he keeps on repeating those words. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of you. But if someone was to die in a state where he's got swear on his tongue or repeating swears with his, uh, you know, repeating it again and again, if he, if he dies in that state, what is going to be anjam? What is going to happen? So Ramadan is the time. 30 days, if you control yourself, you look after your habit, hopefully, inshallah, even after Ramadan, it will be easier for you to abstain from it so inshallah in next uh, episodes we will be covering more etiquettes hidden etiquettes which are mentioned by uh, Amira Sunni Dati Islami in this book but lessons what we need to take or uh, the uh, takeaway from today's episode or from today's session is firstly wake up for Sahari sit with your family have your Sahari meal and again the intention should be acting on Sunnah Prophet Wasallam and making intention for your fasting have that intention your fast that you're fasting for the month of ramadan and it's better to repeat those words and we cover two uh, habits to stay away from refrain in the month of ramadan whilst you're fasting and even outside ramadan but especially in ramadan if you want your fast to be complete and accepted in the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you need to give up lying you need to give up using any appropriate word or using language which is abusive language which is not good May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all tawfiq to act on whatever has been said. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aaj SDI channel ko subscribe kare, bell icon par click kare. Hamari hausla avzai ke liye comments, like aur share bhi karte rahein.